Alright, alright, welcome back Hat Clan fam. I got an awesome lesson for you coming your way. We are checking out how to do, yet again, another installment of the How to Arrange for Solo Guitar series. But this week we are checking out how to do a super, super cool jazz standard and we're going to be checking out Made Most Famously by Frank Sinatra, Fly Me to the Moon. If you haven't seen my solo cover that I've done of this, I'll have that link down in the video. But we're going to talk about how I kind of arrived to arranging in the solo format. So that way that you can kind of take away some of the steps of this approach and apply them into your own playing. I'm going to probably stack this video in a couple different series because these are going to be probably a little bit lengthy. But let's zoom in and start breaking this concept right on down. Alright, alright. So let's kind of talk about the process here of kind of breaking down a solo um, chord melody arrangement. How to arrange for solo guitar. I'm going to throw some sheet music up on screen here. And then we'll kind of break down each individual part and I'll kind of deconstruct it and at least my thoughts and my approaches and how I arrange um, for solo guitar. Um, before we do that though, I want to talk about this guitar because I always get a lot of questions about this guitar. This is a Godin, G-O-D-I-N, pronounced Godin, multi-act nylon. They're made right in Canada. Um, they're super, super cool guitars. They're all nylon string. Um, they have synth access to them in the bottom, which is super, super cool. And I always get a lot of questions about this because they're really curious and they don't understand what it is. And it's just like a regular guitar, um, but just really, really cool. So anyway here, let's uh, kind of play through the beginning part here. So the kind of idea here is, if you kind of look at the melody line here, we kind of have this descending scale. So we start with this high C. And basically the chords that we have that are kind of based around that are an A minor 7 bar of A minor 7, a bar of D minor 7, a G7, a C major 7, and an F major 7, to a B minor 7 flat 5, to an E7 with a flat 9, back to an A minor 7 again. So we're kind of just thinking that, you know, fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars. So you kind of get the idea. As I've mentioned in other previous videos, the most important thing about arranging for solo guitar is understanding your chord shapes in every possible inversion and every possible voice that you can think of. So sometimes um, with solo arranging, it's not just enough to know um, a certain chord in a certain position. We have to understand the notes that belong in that, in that chord so that we can delegate the melody line. And what I mean by that is most of the time in good music um, writing and composing, the melody line is going to be comprised of notes that are in the chord that you're playing over top of. That's what we would call chord tones. Now there's obviously um, situations where you might have non-chord tones, where you have like a leading tone to something else or a passing tone, um, but in most of the instances you're going to have notes that belong within the chord context that you're playing over. And understanding how to manipulate those notes around that given chord is going to be really, really helpful to you to develop this idea of solo kind of um, arranging. So in this first part here, we have this melody line that goes C, B, A, G, and that's all over an A minor 7 chord. Now, I've been kind of playing this up at the octave. You could play it down the octave. But I don't like it that much, so I'm kind of opting for a higher register to get that more kind of somber quality. Basically I'm starting up here with this A minor 7 up here on the 7th fret. And the reason I'm using this choice is if we just look at our melody line, we have this high C note. And it lends itself to this A minor 7 chord that has the C note in the melody line. So this is based off an A minor 7 chord here. Finger wise we'd have nothing on the two lower strings. We'd have 7, um, 7, 9, 8, and 8. So that would be root, fifth, seventh, and third. A minor seven, but we have that C in the melody line. Now I'm just going to manipulate the notes around this chord so that I can get this melody line. So I have the next melody note is a B. Well, I'm one half step away from that. So C, B, C, B, A, G. All of those 
those notes, with the exception of the B note, are all within an A minor 7 chord. So the C is the minor 3rd, the B would be would we consider the ninth scale degree, um, and then we have the 7th, the flat 7th, and then we have the root. So I'm basing that all around that A minor 7 chord. So. so that leads me to have my G. Now the next chord is a D minor 7 chord. So I have to think about what D minor 7 voicing can I have where I have this F note within the melody line, or if you're playing it down here in this version of it. Well, what works really nice about this is we can play this version of D minor 7. Or we can play this version. Because that's going to have that melody note on top. And now I'm just manipulating the notes again around that chord. So I have F and then G. I'm going to use my fourth finger to grab that G on the eighth fret of the B. My first finger is taking care of the A note because I have that bar there. And then I'm going to jump up to the C note, which is the seventh, the flatted seventh of the chord with my pinky finger. And again, all of those notes are based directly out of that chord. So the F is the minor third. The G, what we consider the fourth, we could consider that a passing tone because it's going to go up to the fifth, which is the fifth of the chord, the A, and then to the C, the flat seventh. So again, this is just derived right from those chords. So again, it's all about thinking about the chords and then the notes that belong in that chord and then deriving it around that. So up until this point. So now on the C, I have to go to a G7 chord. Well, I have to have a B in the bay, or in the melody line. So I'm going to opt for the for a G7 chord that has the B in the high voice. So a typical G7 like this has a G. So that doesn't give me my melody note. So I have to think about how I can form a G major or G7. Okay, this version of it has the D in the melody note. So here's here's an inversion of it. This happens to be in root position. And I'm going 5, 7, 6, and then 7 again. And look, that's got my B note in it right there. So we went from here. All I had to do to get that A note, take off my pinky. And then I'm just manipulating my fingers all around that chord. So here's the A minor 7. all over G7, then I have to go to a C major 7. Well, we kind of think of C major 7 maybe as like this, or like this, or like this. Most commonly seen like this. I have an E note that's now in my melody line. I just hit the C major 7 and that takes care of that melody note right there so easily and perfectly. So we have... So that's your first four measures. Now, continuing to go on, in the fifth measure there, we have an F major 7. I'm opting to use this version of an F major 7 because I have an A melody note that has to be in the higher register. You know, here's your melody line. So, I'm opting for this version of C major, or F major 7. It's like a D major 7 chord, but up here, and barring. So, these are all movable shapes. So, I'm on 3, 5, 5, 5. So, that's F major 7, so I'd have root... Um, fourth, or excuse me, root, fifth, seventh, and then um, major third on top. So again, these notes are just all derived from that chord. So from the next point, we're going to have, I have a, a G note after that A, which would be considered like the, the ninth of this chord, the second scale degree. So I basically have to go down. So I'm thinking chord line so a g f e so check this out all up to this point now we have to go to a b minor seven flat five so there's a couple different things that we can think about here i need to have a, a d note in the melody line um so we could we could play uh, b minor seven flat five like this the only problem is with this though is this doesn't lend myself to have the D in the melody note. We can play it this way. This would have the D in the melody note, but because I'm already down in this position coming off the F major 7, I'm opting for this version of this B minor 7 flat 5. And evidently, the D is in the melody note. So I'm going D and then open E and then F. And now here's an example where I have to kind of slide out of position 
you grab this high A, fifth fret of your E string to get that A melody note, and then the next chord is an E7 flat 9 chord. So interestingly enough, if I just play a regular E7, this will let me have my melody note that I need, because I need a G sharp. The only problem is though, is if I do that, I'm not getting the flat 9 in there. So sometimes in when arranging for the guitar, sometimes you have to kind of manipulate your notes, so you might have to take away or add notes. But what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to opt for this version of an E7. So this is going to be in root position, just like we did with the G7 up here, but now it's going to be down here on the second fret. And that's going to opt me to have my G sharp in the melody line. And now I'm going to have to kind of jump out of position so I can grab that F note. I'm going to open open E and then D and then I'm going to be into this A minor so I can get the C melody note. So again, I'm kind of taking everything up the octave here. So let me play that whole first section. And then on the last kind of new section over here, we go to this a7 with a flat 9. I'm just going to opt for regular A major chord at this point. So that gets that C sharp in the melody note. And that's going to take care of your first kind of like intro part of the song. And that's going to be a, uh, a repetitious line. So that kind of happens multiple different times here. So let's continue to move on here. So the next part we're going to have is the in the other words part. So in other words, hold my hand. In other words, So we are now on this part where we're going to go, in other words, so now I have to think about a D minor chord, but now I have to have A in the melody line here. I'm just going to play my regular old D minor 7 chord. So we have this. So that'll take care of that. And then over this G9 chord, a G9 chord basically is going to have A in the melody line again. So I'm thinking about how I can play a G9 chord that's going to have a in the melody line. Well, we could jump all the way up here. I don't have the A in the melody, but since I'm already here, I'm going to opt to play this version of it. And that's going to have the A in the melody line. So basically that's like this kind of like a clam shape. I always refer to these as the clam shape. So it's like a D major 7 or D major 9, but move down a half step on set of strings. And that'll have our melody note in the top. So from there we have... So we have to go to this B again. We have to go to G7 again to have that B in the melody line there. So from that on the second line we have A minor 7 and then to A7 then... Now we have to go to a C major 9 but we need the G in the melody line here. So instead of playing this, which would have the 9th in the top, I'm going to opt to do this. This is a C6-9. So I'm doing a little bar here on the second fret. And that is going to have this whole kind of section in there. And now moving on, we need to go to an A minor 7 again, but now we need it with the G in the melody line. So what we can do here is we need to think about how I can make an A minor 7 chord, but with G in the melody. Well, since I'm already here, I can just opt for this version of it. Like an A minor chord, but we just put our pinky up here. And now we need to jump up to a B. So this is going to be the in other words. So after we go there, we're going to have the D minor 7. We're going to have F in the melody line again, just like before, what we did before. And then we're going to do go back to G7, but we need to have A in the bass, or A in the melody, excuse me. So instead of having with B, we're just manipulating our fingers around so that we can put the A in the bass there, in the melody line. And then we're going to go to G, and then F, and then E to C major 7. So for this F diminished 7, this is a fully diminished 7th chord, so we could play it like this. But we again need to kind of have this in a position where we can have the F in the
the melody line. So how can we do that? Well, we have this version of it. Oops, sorry. We have this version of it. We have this version of it. What I'm kind of opting for here is I would probably honestly play it like this. And then maybe slide my pinky up here so I can get that F melody note. So let me kind of play this all together now so that we have a whole collection of this. So now we're on the second part here. So we have... seven chord and then we're gonna go which is gonna take us into the next part all right guys that was the video I hope you really liked it let me know what other songs you may be interested in me doing for solo arranging I think solo arranging is like one of the most rewarding and most fun experiences about the guitar and playing the guitar as if it's kind of like a piano where you're playing your chords your bass and your melody line it's really really fun to do uh, with all that being said I will see you all in the next video and take care